Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous. It keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Reverend Dr. David Binden on the Good Life Devotion brought to you by the Mega Light Mission, the church for this generation. You are welcome to today's episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. The Good Life Devotion is brought to you by the Megalite Mission. We have fellowships and cells all over the city of Accra, Ghana, and around the world. To fellowship with any of our branches near you, call any of the numbers displayed on your screen and join our life transforming services. You can also log on to www.megalitemission.com and subscribe to teachings and other ministry materials by Dr. David Bender and receive the latest updates on our programs and services. Get ready for your transformation in your life as you grab your Bible, notebook and pen to receive God's word for today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful morning once again to be connected on your favorite Gula devotion. This is your center for biblically authoritative teachings. And I'm sure you have started digesting the subject of righteousness. And we're going to be looking along those lines on how to live in holiness. It's something that a lot of people have thought it is not possible. But as you watch and go through your own Bible, you are going to understand so much. And your life just cannot be the same. Shall we share in the word of prayer? Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for your love. We bless you for your power that is at work in our lives. Thank you for the truth of your word that is shining on us and establishing us in the path of righteousness. We give you all the praise and the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Wow. So by the grace of God in the previous episode, we looked at the subject, you are declared righteous. And what God has said you are, you are. You are not wiser than God. You are not holier than God. You know, there are some people, they have become God's watchman over people's lives. They don't want you to ever say you are righteous. Because they think that they are, they are protecting God's holiness. But you are not God. You will not be stand, sitting on the judgment seat. The God who is judging, he is the one that said that if somebody has Christ in him, that person is declared righteous. No matter what you are seeing. And always remember that when we say things like this, it is not that we are condoning sin. But the truth is that a babe, the thing that a baby will do and people will wink at, a baby Christian too, God sees him that he's doing these things all right, but he knows what he has put in him. What a baby Christian needs is to know the truth so that he'll grow out of it. I keep on referring to the example of a child. A child is a complete human being, but he cannot talk sometimes, depending on the age, cannot walk, cannot sit down. Does that make, not make the child a human being? Are you going to call that child a log because it's lying down flat and cannot move? But you know that with proper feeding and nourishing over a month or some months and some years, that child will be functioning like a human being. It's the same thing with a Christian. Someone is born again today. He needs to be nourished in the truth of God's word. So he may be doing one or two things. That doesn't mean that he's a sinner. You need to let him know who he is in the spirit. And when he accepts that report, he becomes that. Today we are moving on to look at the topic, be holy. Be holy. And people like to talk about this, be holy, but they don't really understand what holiness is. Again, when it comes to holiness, like any other Christian subject, don't live based on hearsays. We have cautioned you over and again 
in the Gula devotion. That for every Christian terminology, always make sure that you've gone to the Bible yourself and studied it to see what it means. Don't take what people are saying. See it in the Bible for yourself. If you say you cannot read, that is why God has sent us your way to teach you the truth. So when that you see in the scripture, be holy, what does it mean? So our teaching today is to explain to you the meaning of be holy. So our, our main scripture today is 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, I'll take it from verse 15. It says that, but as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. And verse 16 explains, it says that, because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. So when he said be holy, what exactly did he mean according to the Bible? According to the Bible, when you see be holy, it means one of three things. So be holy has three meanings. And depending on the context in which it is used, you can determine which of these meanings is being used. So when you hear be holy, it is referring to one of these three things. And this is gotten from the various Greek words that are translated to us as holy in the English language. Sometimes one of the reasons why there are some challenges is because of the limitation of the vocabulary in the English language. Like a word like knowledge. When you see knowledge in English, in the Greek there are about four or five meanings. And if you take it to mean the same thing everywhere, you'll be making a mistake. It's the same thing about holy. So take your notepad and write. To be holy means number one. First of all, to be holy is from the Greek word hosios. The Greek word hosios. And it means to be right by divine nature. To be right by divine nature. In other words, it refers to the pure state of divine life that we receive in Christ. So let me explain that. When you receive Jesus Christ, you receive the life of God into you. You have received God into you. Now, the coming into your life of God makes you holy. So that, that state, that nature of separation from the world, that uniqueness in you because of God's presence makes you holy. And that's the first meaning of holiness. So for instance, God can say to an unbeliever, be holy. And what he means is that, let me come into you or receive my nature. Because when you receive my nature, you receive the state or the nature of holiness. So you, you have become holy. This has nothing to do with what you have done or not done. By just having the holy nature of God in you makes you holy. Are you getting that? So it was used in Titus chapter 1 verse 8 to describe how a bishop or a minister will be. And among many other things, he used the word, the minister must have this nature, this state of being holy, the nature of God in him. Which means that if one doesn't have Christ in him, that person cannot be appointed as a teacher, I mean as a bishop in the church. So imagine the many people who are, who are leaders in the church who are not born again. It means they have not qualified biblically to be deacons, deaconesses, or pastors or bishops. So when you hear, be holy, it means get the nature of God into you. Receive that state of holiness of God into your spirit. And therefore become holy. That's the first meaning. Hosios. Number two, or the second meaning of be holy is from the Greek word hagios. Hagios. And it means to be physically pure or morally blameless. And this is what a lot of people know. So when they hear holiness... All they are thinking about, don't touch this, don't touch that, be morally blameless. That is correct. 
But be holy is not limited to that only. And in fact, if you don't understand the very first meaning of holiness, you cannot exhibit this one. So the second meaning of be holy is hajios. And that means to be physically pure. A state in which you are not dented with something that is impure. It means to be morally blameless. That is to be holy. And that state refers to the physical expression of our internal holiness to which we have been called. So when you get born again, the presence of God in you makes you holy. And because you are holy now because of the presence of God in you, God expects you to, act, to express that holiness on the outside. So be holy even as you are holy. You see that? So if you are holy inside, God says, I've called you unto holiness. Why? Because now because I am in you, you are holy. Therefore, live a life of holiness. Are you following the discussion? So, the first meaning of holiness, Hosios, means that by the presence of God in your life, you are holy. Israel was called a holy nation because God was in their presence or was in their midst. God himself is holiness. So, wherever God is, that place becomes holy. So, the presence of God in you, that nature of holiness in you makes you holy. Now, as a result of that nature that you have, then hagios, you must not be morally blameless. You must be pure. You must express that internal holiness. And that's the second meaning of holy. Let's take our Bibles to Romans chapter 1, verse 7. Romans chapter 1, verse 7. It says, to all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In the King James here, it says called to be saints. But if you look at the Greek word, it means called to be holy. Called to be holy. So we are called unto holiness. Why? Because we have received the life of holiness in our spirit. So this is the physical expression of the internal holiness. Then that takes us to the third meaning of holiness. Thirdly, to be holy is from the Greek word heros. The Greek word heros. And that means to be sacred by reason of a formal consecration. Or it refers to both consecrated articles and people. So let me explain that. When you are ordained or when you are formally consecrated into a priestly office, or an office that is dedicated to dealing with holy things, you are said to be holy. So that's why in certain sects of the Christian faith, some people are called His Holiness, like the Pope. Why? Because he has been consecrated into an office where he is expected to deal with holy things. So that holiness is simply because of the office in which has been consecrated. And this kind of holiness does not refer only to people. Even articles that were consecrated and separated to the use of God were considered as holy. So in the olden days, in the tabernacle of God, the cup that they used to drink, the utensils they were using for the offerings, even the altar, even though it was not a living thing, it was declared holy because it was only sanctified for God's use. So when someone says, I'm holy, he could be saying that I've been consecrated into an office where I deal with holy things or I minister to God. That's what it means. And it's right. When somebody says I'm holy, he could be telling that I have the life of holiness in me. And it's right. When someone says I'm holy, he could be saying that I'm morally blameless. And it's right. 
But you know what? For everyone that is born again, these three things are true of the born again. Why? Number one, the born again has received the nature of God, which is the nature of holiness. Number two, the born again has been called to live a holy life, to be morally blameless, not to be meddling with acts of sin, because that is a lifestyle of the people of the world. And the reason is because he has the ability to live that kind of life. So now that God himself is in him, he is called to live a holy life. And number three, the Bible says that having saved us, we have been made priests and kings unto the Lord. So the child of God stands in a priestly office to minister holy things to God. And that makes him holy also. You see, understand that. So when you hear the word, be holy, it means these three things. Hallelujah. Hello, I'm Pastor Sharon Mensa of the World Reinstatement Movement, also known as the Mega Light Mission. Do you know that if you are born again, you have the very life of God in you, and as such, you have liberty in Christ? John chapter 8 verse 36 says, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Jesus tells us in John chapter 8 verse 32, that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. What then is the truth? John 17 verse 17 says, Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. The truth of God's word is what the Holy Spirit expounds to us through Dr. David and Mrs. Cindy Bindan in the day devotional called The Emancipator. The Emancipator is a day devotional published in monthly editions. It brings to you the truth of God's word, which will equip and enable you to exhibit this divine life, which is the good life of righteousness, peace, joy, victory, divine guidance, divine health, and prosperity. There have been many testimonies of growth in the world, healings and victories by all who have used the Emancipator. You can be the next person to share your testimony. Order your copy of this month's Emancipator now. You can also visit our website www.megalightmission.com to download your free copy either in English or in French. Keep on watching The Good Life Devotion with Dr. Bendan on this channel. Life is good. Enjoy. There is power. Are you so burdened with sin consciousness that you are wondering whether you can fully please God? Is there a particular act of sin in your life that you seem not to be able to overcome? Do you seek to have a definite understanding of your righteousness in Christ and forever live as a master over sin? Good news, Dr. David Bindon's best-selling book, Master Over Sin, is a must read. Call the following numbers now for your copies. 0264-327106 or 054-1097651. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, when the Bible says that, be holy, for I am holy. That means that God has the nature of holiness. God is morally blameless. And God is separated unto things of himself. And this is what he expects of us. The world is supposed to receive his life and become holy. And those of us who have received this life are expected to express that life in our daily living. And we should be aware that we are separated unto holy ministry. I told you that when we talk about holiness as a consecration into an office, it does not only refer to people, it also refers to articles. Let's read 
a few scriptures to see what I was saying. 1 Corinthians 9.13. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 13. Look at what it says. It says, Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple? And they which wait at the altar are partakers of the altar. So they minister about holy things. So they are called holy because they have been separated to handle what is declared as unto God. So a minister of God, you are handling holy things. God's people are holy. God's word is holy. The Holy Spirit is holy. All the resources given to you, they are holy things. And so you are holy because of that. As a child of God, it is the same thing. That is why God is surprised when Christians become so worldly. They don't know that they carry the holy presence of God. And they are not supposed to get themselves dented or made dirty with interactions with the world. You see, so when the, a Christian becomes so worldly, gets involved in things of the world, he's making himself ceremonially unclean, even though he has the holy nature in him. And that is inconsistent with scripture. So our separation from the world must be very clear. The way the world talks is corrupt. The way the world thinks is corrupt. So the principles behind their entertainment and fun is corruption. That is why the joy of a Christian is not supposed to come from worldly entertainment. The games that the world play, their systems are not correct. So the child of God has, we have our own way of life. Which is coming from the life that we have. The kingdom of God is a whole culture altogether. So if you realize that your being in Christ doesn't give you joy. And you have to get the entertainment of the world. Or meddle with the things of the world. You, you don't know how you are holy. And that is how come Christians can still be bold enough to carry the nature of God in them and be fornicating. Carry the nature of God in them and be doing evil things. They don't understand who they are carrying inside. But from today, you understand. And because you know that you are holy and you know you've been called unto holiness, you are going to live a life that God can say you are holy. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 21. Leviticus chapter 21. Verse 8. It said, Thou shalt sanctify him therefore. For he offered the bread of thy God. He shall be holy unto thee. For I, the Lord, which sanctify you, am holy. He was talking about the priest. And he said that the priest shall be holy because God has sanctified him into his office. And today, if you are born again, you are God's priests. So you are holy. So be bold to declare you are holy. This one too, a lot of people are being religious about it. When you say you are holy, say, eh, they think you are bragging. They think you are being, a, a, you are exhibiting a kind of holier than thou attitude. But if God is holy and God is in me, who am I? I carry his holy presence. And if I know this, I will honor my body. A lot of Christians are abusing their bodies because they don't know the holiness of the God inside them. If you know how holy God is in you, you can't stretch out your hands to do evil things. Your mouth cannot utter certain words. Because you carry the holiness of God. It is in your nature. Say with me, I carry the holiness of God. Say, it is in my nature. Say, I express holiness in my living. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Wow, there is a confession here I want us to make. No, a prayer rather. Before we round up. Let me just read the rounding part of the man's prayer. It says that, to be holy therefore is what we are. As God's children. With his nature in us. And it is what we do. As those who live lives. That are unstained by sinful acts. So if you summarize the meaning of holiness. We discuss. Holiness is a nature. It's a state. And holiness is an act. 
As a nature, you got it by being born again. As an act, you express it in your daily living. So you can't say, oh, I am holy because I'm born again, and you are just messing now with dirty things in the world. You are becoming morally blame, uh, uh, blameable now. You are becoming ceremonially unclean. You are becoming physically impure if you get yourself meddling into these things. And the reason because you are more than that. If, you are, if, if the holiness of God in you becomes an awesome something, you can't joke with sinful acts. But if you don't know this, you'll be playing around. The Bible says that your body was bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your spirit and in your body. We have a prayer here. Say with me, dear Father, thank you for teaching me that your life in me makes me holy. And that enables me to live as holy, just as you are holy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wow. Have you been watching me on this episode and you have not yet received Jesus? Then it means that you have not received the holy nature of God into you. And in that way, you can never be holy. Because Christianity is not a polishing of the outside. It is the expression of the internal life we have. So if you don't have Christ in you, holiness is not in you. No matter how much you try, your righteousness is as filthy rags. The solution to all this is to receive the life of God into your spirit. That life is available to you. The Bible has shown us how to receive it with ease. It says, believe with all your heart that God raised Christ from the dead and confess him as Lord over your life. Why don't you do this right now and receive the life of God into your spirit? Say with me, dear Lord Jesus, I love you so much. For dying for me, I believe with all my heart that God raised you from the dead. Dear Jesus, I declare today that you are Lord over my life. Hallelujah. I pray this prayer. You are born again. Make sure that you call us and we'll help you to grow. We are going to take this matter higher in our next episode. So don't miss it. But till then, ensure that you enjoy your life. Thank you for watching the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan, brought to you by the Megalite Mission. To fellowship with any of our branches near you, call 055-792-7744. Follow Dr. David Bindan on Facebook by simply liking the Good Life Devotion page and the David Bindan Life page and receive daily nuggets to enable you exhibit God's divine life in you. Also watch previous episodes of the Good Life Devotion on YouTube on the Dr. David Bendan channel and you will be blessed. Visit our website today at megalightmission.com and have access to life-transforming teachings and materials by Dr. David Bendan and Mrs. Cindy Bendan. Your life will never be the same. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bender. Life is good. Enjoy.